Newbury Electronics. Since 1956, the company has played its role in the rapid evolution of the electronics industry to become a leader in electronics design, fabrication, assembly and test. The Berkshire market town of Newbury is home to Newbury Electronics and is a regional centre for high-tech industries along the M4 corridor. Let's join Philip King for a tour through the PCB fabrication process. Every job starts with an order and many of these orders are received online. The job of our sales office is to check that all the information received from clients is sufficient for us to make the printed circuit board and if they're happy we will acknowledge the order to our clients and pass the information to our CAD CAM department to process the data for production. The CAD CAM tooling process is crucial to the production of a printed circuit board. We have to ensure that the data that our customers supply is manufacturable. That means that if we process it through our plant, that the circuit board we manufacture is actually going to work. The CAD GAM team ensure that the data we prepare is manufacturable by our production process. We're now in the CAD CAM department and it's here that our engineers take client Gerber data and produce PCB production tooling. Part of the data that the CAD CAM department produces will be film work data which can be plotted on our laser plotter and printed onto silver halide photography. Uh, we're in the drill shop. This is where we drill holes in the copper blanks such as this. Here we've got a drill machine operating. The drill has around 1,000 drills in its magazine, has all the sizes that we may require during the course of drilling over a few days. The machine is linear motor driven in the X, Y and Z axis. It also auto loads and unloads the blanks at the completion of each drill cycle. Printed circuit boards need holes drilled through them, both to mount leaded parts and also to provide connections between the top surface and the bottom surface because it's down those holes we will plate copper to make the connection between the top and the bottom surface. This is a typical printed circuit board production panel I've picked up to show you as an example. The double sided PTA for 1.6mm FR4 and you can see that if you look carefully there are different circuits on this some little round ones there, a uh, little rectangular one there, different one there, there's two there, a uh, different one there, different one there. So you can see it's got multiple circuits on the same panel. By doing that we've got one setup and we're producing maybe up to 10 or 11 different circuits at a time on the same sheet. And that saves costs substantially. The multi-layer bonding process creates the blank on which you print the outer layers of the circuit board, uh, the inner layers already having been prepared with a print and etch process and then bonded using pre-pregs in the multi-layer press. So you might have four or six or even eight inner layers which are bonded together as a sandwich and then the outer layers will be, become plain copper and that plain copper sandwich will then be processed as a two-layer blank. This is the multi-layer vacuum lamination press. We've got three daylights, one, two, three. They're oil heated to about 185 degrees centigrade and the platens loaded with the inner layer blanks are loaded on these rollers into the daylights and they are heated for about two hours to cure the laminate.
off the multi-layer bonding process, you're left with a blank with just copper sheets on either side and the patterns within that blank, uh, you can't actually see it. Uh, you need to drill through that blank and target the pads on the inner layers. So you x-ray the targets on that blank and allow the machine to calculate a best fit for two tooling holes which are placed on the center line of the blank which will allow you to pin it up on the drilling machine and then drill the holes through the blank, plumb through the pads on the inner layers. This is our x-ray hole drilling machine. We use this for drilling registration holes in multi-layer blanks. The machine x-rays targets in the corners of a blank and then calculates the best position for two registration holes on the centre line of the blank. This is the direct metallization line, sometimes called a black hole line. The boards are just coming out of the line here now. And in this process, we lay down a layer of carbon down the barrel of the holes. And the carbon will become the cathode in the electrolytic plating process so that we can plate copper down the holes. The next stage of the process is the photomate department and this is where we photographically print the artwork of printed circuit board onto photosensitive film which has been laminated on the copper blanks. The first step is to laminate the circuit board with photosensitive film and then the image of the circuit board is printed using laser direct imaging uh, that is a machine with eight lasers on it and that scans the surface of the board. The laser beam polymerizes the resins in the laminated film where the light hits the film. Where the laser hasn't been imaged, the resins remain soft and they can be developed out on the developing lines. The lasers are scanning the surface of the blanks, printing the image of the circuit board onto the photosensitive film. We have here the developing lines. This is the photomet developer, and that develops the plating for this. And after development, you can see the image of the circuit board. It comes out as a blue resist. At this point, the blanks have been drilled, carbon has been put down the holes. We've applied a plating resist and that's been developed, so we're now ready to electrolytically plate the circuit boards. This line here is the electrolytic plating line. There are two tanks at the far side of copper, and the near tank here is the tin tank. In these tanks here, we've got the copper blanks, you can see them on the cathode rails there, and there's some more on this, this tank here. The blanks remain in the electrolytic copper tanks for about an hour to complete the plating process. They're then carried over into the tin tank where they're plated with a layer of tin, which takes about a further 10 minutes. This is the control workstation for the electrolytic plating line. We don't use a DC plating process, we actually use a periodic reverse pulse plating. That means for a few milliseconds a high current is applied in the reverse direction. And this has the effect, combined with proprietary chemistry in the tanks, of improving the throw rate of the copper down small holes. This is the strip X strip line. It's three processes in one line. In the first section of the line, the machine strips the plating resist from the, from the panels. In the middle section, we're etching the copper. And in the final section, we strip the tin from the surface of the panel.
Whilst we're in the workshop, we can see printer-net multilayer inner layers undergoing black oxide surface pretreatment to promote good adhesion between the copper layers and the resin bonding system when the inner layers are bonded later. AOI inspection is where the circuit boards are scanned by a camera and the image is compared with the CAD data that the CAD CAM department have created. So there's a comparison between the two images and any differences are flagged up by the computer software so the operator can check whether the errors identified are going to be important or insignificant. After the strip etch strip process in the workshop, the copper blanks have their copper track work complete, but they haven't got a solder resist at this stage. So the solder resist is created by flood coating using a screen print process, a photo imageable ink over the entire surface of the circuit boards. Then this is part cured to a tack finish by cooking it for 20 minutes in a low temperature oven. The photoimageable resist is sensitive and using a contact print process in the photomech room, it's printed under UV light for a few seconds to harden off the areas which are exposed by the UV light. And that is then developed and that produces the sold resist. You can see here, sold resist being printed. The vacuum has come down, the machine's now going to be exposed under the UV light. This is the photo imageable solder resist developing line. And uh, we're just loading aboard the uh, This is the immersion silver line. Here we apply a very thin layer of silver to the surface of the pads. This provides a good soldable finish in the assembly process. Legend printing is the, uh, the white ink you generally see on a circuit board which identifies where the parts are placed. We print the legend using a, an inkjet legend printer uh, which is a blown up version or rather an industrial version of uh, a, a desktop inkjet printer. This is the image we're printing. And as the grey line extends down, it shows the area which the legend printer is printed. So it's gradually progressing down across the panel. It'll take about a minute and a half to print the whole side. Once the legend's been printed, the boards must be separated by routing the individual circuits out of the panel. So they've returned to the drill shop and are put on the same drilling machines as we saw earlier in the process, but they are also capable of routing the profile as well, and the individual circuits are routed out. The final part of the process is the electrical test. Every circuit board we manufacture is electrically tested. We use one of the machines uh, here we can see in front of us, and they measure the continuity of every net on the circuit. This is from data prepared by our CAD CAM department. And they check for isolation by measuring the capacitance of each net. And any net which has a similar capacitance, it will then double check to ensure that they're isolated. There are four probes on this machine, two at the front, two at the back and they're driven by lead screws so they can probe both sides of the board simultaneously. And they'll probe test at about five tests a second. That's where we're fault finding on the board. 
During the course of the P2P production process, the boards return to inspection for a careful check that they are of a satisfactory quality. What we see here is the final inspection, where we take one last look at the circuit boards before we dispatch them. After all the production process is complete, we are left with the packing process where we have to make sure that our client's circuit boards are packed and dispatched to the correct delivery address. We consume about 50 cubic metres of water in the PCB manufacturing process and it all has to be treated before we can discharge it to the drain. We treat it in this tower here. This tower contains about two tonnes of activated carbon and the effluent passes through this tower, remains in contact with the carbon for about 30 minutes and that takes out all the heavy metals. And the water, after it's treated, is purer than when it arrives at our factory uh, in the mains water supply. I'm often asked about what we do with our scrap materials and how well we recycle uh, the uh, raw materials. And uh, here we've got our scrap bins. Um, nothing is really goes to waste. We've got steel scrap here, general workshop scrap, um, copper brasserie, which is the remains of what, what's left over of the circuit boards when they're routed out. Uh, we've got scrap aluminium here, more copper brasserie, and uh, Scrap aluminium here, this is part of the production process, these are the entry boards in the drilling process. Anyway, you can see the holes through that. Uh, one of those is used for every panel we drill, and that all gets melted down and used again. We recycle the cardboard as well, a um, bin full of cardboard there. All the pallets we use get recycled, they're sent back for reuse. Anything we can't specifically recycle goes in this bin where it gets collected each week and goes to a combined heat and power generation plant where it gets incinerated and produces electricity. Our spent etchant is collected up in uh, tanks such as these and uh, periodically we return it to the manufacturers where the copper is recovered out of the etchant and replenished etchant is returned to us for reuse.